Hello everyone. One day a father took his four-year-old son out shopping. When lunch time came, the two of them went to a coffee shop. They ordered a sandwich, and when the waiter had brought the food, the father said, "Son, we will just have a silent prayer." Dad got through praying first and waited for the boy to finish his prayer. But he just sat there with his head bowed for an unusually long time. When he finally looked up, his father asked him, "What in the world were you praying about all that time?" With the innocence and honesty of a child, he replied, "How do I know, Dad? It was a silent prayer." Friends, prayer is a channel of communication between God and us. Many of us understand the importance of prayer because from the beginning of time people have looked up at the skies and believing that the creator of the universe is somewhere up there offered prayers and asked for help from him From the scriptures we learn that Abraham prayed Moses prayed every prophet prayed and so did our Lord Jesus We also know the power of prayer Prayer enables us to have a personal and intimate experience with God. Prayer helps us to know and understand ourselves and others. Prayer fills our life with greater peace of mind and heart. Hence, we are not only encouraged to pray to God only in times of trouble, but at all times, and to be consistent and persistent in our prayer. However, We often have to struggle with praying. There are times when you pray words don't come easily. I'm sure you have had one of those moments in life when you just couldn't find the right words to tell the Lord how you feel and what you are going through. Friends, it is consoling to know that we are not alone in our struggles with the prayer. Many of the saints including the great apostle Paul struggled with it. That's why in his letter to the Romans he writes, "The spirit comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the spirit himself intercedes for us with inexpressible groanings, and the one who searches the hearts knows the intention of the spirit, because He intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. Friends, Paul tells us that the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. What is weakness? Weakness means lacking in something. We do not have what it takes. We have all kinds of weaknesses. One, physical weakness. the lack of physical strength because of old age illnesses or hunger two emotional weakness a lack of positive response or reaction during times of frustration anger disappointment and despair three spiritual weakness lack of faith or little faith spiritual weakness can become an excuse for sin four intellectual weakness the lack of ability to know god's will in his letter to the romans paul is not talking about our physical or emotional spiritual weakness but our intellectual weakness he reminds us that because of our intellectual weakness we do not know how to pray as we ought perhaps jesus realizing that prayer is a struggle gives us a basic outline of how to pray in the gospel of Matthew chapter 6 he instructs us on the kinds of things for which we ought to be praying we should start with honoring god's holy name then we should pray for god's righteous kingdom to come for god's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven for daily bread and the forgiveness of sins Perhaps it is easy for us to just pray the our father prayer. The problem is that we don't know how to pray properly in specific circumstances. 
When we engage in prayer, we usually ask for what we want or would like, but we do not know or care what God wants. The reason why we cannot pray as we ought to is we have no power to predict what the future holds or know what is best for us. Any of our prayers may result in something good for us or it may bring ultimate harm. William Barclay, a famous Scottish theologian, says that often we are like a child who wants something which is harmful. But God as a parent refuses our request or makes us do something we do not want to because he knows what is best for us far better than we do ourselves. For instance, when praying for an elderly sick person, should we pray for healing or a peaceful death or courage to accept the illness? When praying for people in financial hardships, should we pray for God to help them win a lottery or to provide them with the money needed or ask him to help them cultivate a contented heart. When praying for a job, should we pray for any old job regardless of the salary or for a particular job with a particular salary or the patience to wait for a job with good pay and benefits? Likewise, we often do not know what to pray for in specific situations. Since we are weak in knowing the will of God, St. Paul says that the Spirit who dwells within us comes to the aid of our weakness and offers praise to God on our behalf. This does not mean we do not have to pray or engage in prayer. We still have to pray, though we often have to struggle with it. Our effort is necessary because unless we engage in prayer, we will receive no help. What Paul is teaching us here is that the Spirit is at our side when we pray. How does the Spirit intercede for us? Paul says, the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. He tells us that the Spirit intercedes for us with groans, words we cannot understand. Sometimes when we grieve the death of a loved person, we may utter many words in prayer, and yet they seem to be so inadequate. We cannot pray aright because of our limitation or weakness. We just do not know what we should be bringing to God in prayer. And yet there is a deep hunger for comfort and peace within us. Paul reminds us that the spirit within us and by our side looks deep into our hearts and sees something within. He hears our words, though we have not even uttered them. The Spirit expresses our prayers in a spiritual and heavenly language which God the Father understands. The Spirit groans on our behalf. The Spirit takes all our weak prayers, interprets them and offers them to God in a right and acceptable way. Since the Spirit intercedes in accord with God's will, His prayers are always answered. God's will is not thwarted by our weakness in prayer. This is a great encouragement for us. God's will will be fulfilled in our lives despite our weak and inadequate prayers. Friends, first let us remember that God knows our weaknesses and He is there to help us. He will never leave us alone. He will not stand silently by in our suffering. We shall always with gratitude remember that when we pray, the Spirit always joins us so that we do not pray alone. Best of all, He is praying for us according to God's perfect will. Second, to the best of our ability, we shall submit ourselves to the will of God. The Greek philosopher Socrates once said to his disciples that they could pray for good things, but not to specify them. Instead, they should leave it to God to decide 
what the good things are. Yes, following our Lord Jesus, let us pray. Father, if you are willing, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, let your will be done, not mine. And like Jesus, we pray, Father, into your hands I entrust my spirit. And like Mary, let us say, let it be done to me according to your word. Amen. God bless you.